The economy is now so bad that people are stealing your underpants. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I'm not kidding. This is actually happening. I want to show you the situation that's been going on today as we start going through the recession indicators and what's happening, how people are actually dealing with the effects of inflation. It's been a mess. There's no doubt about that, but I'm going to give it to you step by step. And I want to make sure that you're aware of how you can deal with these circumstances and not just simply sit there with your arms crossed and say, nothing I can do. Look, we can't decide what happens from the top down. That stuff is being planned by the puppet masters, but we can certainly help ourselves out, our families out, because somebody's got to do it for us. Nobody is going to come and save us. All right, let's begin right here. The S&P 500 looks risky. There's a 75% chance of a recession this year and a fire, firing frenzy is looming. That's according to the bond king, Jeffrey Gundlach. So what he said was talking about, you know, looking at it, obviously the Magnificent Seven, those tech stocks are way, way overvalued. But it's also important to note that um, looking at the uh, yield curve inversion. Yield curve inversion, we've been talking about this for many, many years on this channel. What that means is basically like the bond market sending a major signal that a recession is coming and it's when it goes back, like it goes down and then it comes back up and that's the signal on the way back up that, hey, we got recession. Now it it inverts, it, it goes the opposite way, it inverts again. These things do happen, so we don't know where it's going to be tomorrow. But we've been told over and over and over again that, hey, we're, we're smarter than that now. This is this time is different. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, every time is different, but it's kind of the same. They print a whole bunch of money. It creates a problem. They fix it with a whole bunch of more money printing. Money. Right. Anyway, looking at this, what I can tell is that there's so many different indications that you know, maybe you don't want to define it as a recession, but people are much worse off. Look at the usage of the food banks. Look at the usage of the credit cards. Look at the buy now, pay later. Look at what people are doing right now today versus before when all that cash was flush. It's a very different world, is it not? Google's latest layoffs are just the beginning. Everyone at Google understands that these are coming from the top. So you got Google cutting, but of course, other tech companies are cutting. Other businesses are cutting. It's not just tech. They did hire a lot. A lot of these companies, 2020, easy money, they hired a lot of people. And now things have changed, certainly. And so that's what Jeffrey Gunlock is talking about. I'm a California restaurant operator preparing for the $20 an hour fast food wage by trimming hours eliminating employee vacations and raising menu prices. And you could disagree with that. You could hate that guy. That's what's going on. Look at it. The input costs rise and immediately the people in business, they respond. These businesses take a lot to operate. The store leases, okay, if you're leasing a store, it's so expensive. You'd be like, I, I have heard from these people who operate retail locations, small locations, okay? The price that they pay is, is crazy. And they just hope that it's going to get better. But let me tell you, it doesn't seem like that's the case, right? The landlords have higher costs right now. If, if you know, interest rates just drop down to zero again, okay, certainly things could change. But likely in those circumstances, there's a big problem going on. Like if they're going to drop it down to zero, that's a different situation. I don't think that they necessarily go, if they start to cut rates, that they drop it to zero. They might, you know, go super slow on that, super slow. Eventually something breaks, but they don't have to just take it from five and a quarter to five and a five all the way down to zero. I mean, there's no, nobody says that, that they have to, but understand that input costs have a direct impact on what the consumer has to pay. That's you. And so we see that right here. U.S. consumer debt soared to new heights in the run-up to the holiday season. I mean, I didn't even need to show you that stat. It's obvious, of course, of course. Now, people, I should mention that people were looking for deals on Black Friday. People were looking for deals on uh, Cyber Monday as well as Boxing Day. 
I know this because my own businesses slow before in the lead up to Black Friday and then really hot within that weekend and then slow again in the week after. Very typical, very common. Every year this happens, but probably even more so this year. That's the case. And why are they doing it? Well, they're shopping for Christmas, a lot of cases, right? So just take that into account. But at the same time, they're, they're using debt. I mean, I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, the amount of debt that's being used and they carry a balance. That balance is crazy. In fact, 56 million Americans have been in credit card debt for at least a year. We are seeing pockets of trouble. Yeah, I think the pockets might have a hole in them. All right, look at this. 49% of credit card holders carry debt from month to month. So you've got a problem when you know that interest rates are above 20% on credit cards and they're carrying that over. Imagine, imagine what the payments are like. You can't get out of that. It's a spiral, spiral, spiral down. You can renegotiate that debt. You could go claim bankruptcy on that. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of those people are paying that back, but that hurts you in different ways. This is a problem. This is an issue that's been going on and it's not going to be resolved in any time soon because the government ultimately has their own things that they are, let's just say, pushing on people in the, in the, in the next while and we'll get into that in a second. But S&P 500 has diverged from the job market. So when I look at that, you can see the job openings generally they would be in sync with what's happening in the market. Now, job openings going down, and yet the market has gone up. Now, I think that the market has gone way too hot. It's accelerated. We're at these all-time high kind of levels, um, and it's, it's, in my opinion, way overvalued. But we'll see what happens. I think a lot of businesses were very concerned about higher interest rates and recession and so on, and so they're starting to say, uh, let's just, uh, you know, fire some people. Let's do the quiet firing, which is basically take away all their incentives and all their nice things that they have, try to get them to quit. Uh, I know people that that's happened to just seeing it in this example here, you, you know, you got to understand there's this divergence between the two and it's never a good thing, never a healthy thing to see that. All right. Current indicators. Take your pick. Most of them don't look very strong right now, whether it's general business conditions, new orders, shipments, so on and so forth. These are real good deep indicators that something's not too good. Why? Well, you've got, you know, starting from 2020, printed way too much money, the whole lockdown thing, um, orders started going crazy. They still, I mean, I've, there's some examples of like still the stuff from 2020 still has not been uh consumed because they went way too crazy on certain things uh especially with the ppe and all that stuff that like literally hasn't been i don't know what they were thinking they, they started transforming all these factories factories were transforming themselves because they said we can't do that anymore we're suffering okay let's just go wild on all this other stuff and then at some point they said okay we don't need that stuff anymore so you know it, it's a mess still today. And I told you about underpants. And here we are. I wasn't kidding. Underwear and socks are the latest items to be locked up in shoplifting crackdown as Walmart and Target take uh, Target both take action on theft of undies. I told you. So here you can see an example. There was a little video that I watched and uh, basically they just do a walk through the store. And I just found this to be sad. And I think it's sad. It's that's the first word that came to my mind. Um, it's it's underwear. I mean, it's you, you just don't ever think, OK, electronics. OK, you know, the Apple store, we could see that happening. Uh, they were doing like the cosmetics and stuff. Why? Because you might pay like I don't even know what cosmetics cost, but let's say thirty dollars here, fifty dollars there, um, you know, the considerable. I get that, but but underwear, underwear now, 
So what we can see from this is that the economy is certainly declining, but the government doesn't want to stop that. You see, they want to make sure that you're highly dependent on them. So if you stayed until this part of the video, you understand the truth. All the dots connect. In the Money GPS videos, I have it set up so that you have to watch until the end to understand the full picture. A lot of people that have issued their complaints before did not wait until the end of the video, sadly. Uh, but that's the, you know, with shorts and with reels and all this garbage, uh, that's the way people are trained, right? They need uh, stimulation within three seconds or they're gone and they will not become successful. Anyway, so what we can see here is that this is a worsening state of being. Um, the society is crumbling. The businesses will turn, number one, to online. They will all be cashless. They're not going to have cash in the store. Are you kidding me? And we're going to go to a model in which you speak to the clerk at the front or not even a human. You punch in your number. You do it on your cell phone. When you arrive, the items are then given to you. You could see this with Ikea. You can see those other companies. It's kind of like a click and collect or whatever they call it where, you know, you, you don't interact with the store like you used to. That's coming. That's happening. And I believe it's going to uh, be a part of the cashless society. I want to know your thoughts on this. Is it worrisome? Are you worried about the underpants being the next thing? It's, I'm, I'm trying to make light of it in here, but at the same time, it's sad. What do you think? Hit that thumbs up button. Of course, as always, I do appreciate when you come out and... You, you watch these videos, really, I really do appreciate it. If you are in a circumstance where you need somebody to look at your financial situation, I hooked up with Money Pickle, all right? That's available uh, right here at my website, themoneygps.com. Money Pickle helps out people. They have CFPs, they've got fiduciaries, and will do a 45-minute call with you, and it's totally free, okay? That was the stipulation that I had with them when I signed uh, up to this, that there would be a 45 minute call totally for free and they couldn't just pitch you, couldn't just sell you anything. You go into the link and it actually, there's a you know a calendar right there. You pick the calendar where what time and day suits you best and you get yourself a meeting. Get your situation in order, get someone to look at that. I think it is extremely important right now more than ever before. All right, give me the feedback. When you sign up with them, I want to know what you think. Like I said, it's totally free. Link will be in the description and at themoneygps.com. So hit that thumbs up. I do appreciate your support. And of course, make sure you come back tomorrow. Take care.